Welcome to Know Your Universe right here at the Comic Story and Channel. We're about to deep dive into Jeff John's Green Lantern saga, including the Blackest Night event. I thought we should do an updated recap of each of the Lantern cores because the Green Lantern? That's old news. The Green Lanterns aren't the only core in the galaxy anymore and haven't been for a while. Of course, the problem is that everyone seems to have forgotten about the other cores and most writers don't bother doing much with them, but how awesome would it be to see an adaptation of Jeff John's Green Lantern Corps, the one that gave us the birth of the other Lantern Corps and the Blackest Night event? So to refresh everyone's memories, we're going to run down the various emotional spectrum cores and their largest members. Let's kick it off with the marquee, the most obvious, Green Lanterns. The first Green Lantern on Earth was Alan Scott, though he actually wasn't a member of the Green Lantern Corps. His ring and lantern were actually magic-based, and his powers came from the Star Heart, which was a creature that the Guardians of Oa had in prison for a time. The current version of the Green Lanterns were created by the Guardians of the Universe, which call the planet of Oa as their home. The Guardians are immortal, and created the Green Lantern Corps as peacekeepers that patrol the universe. Each lantern is given a power ring and a lantern that is powered by the central battery on Oa. Green lanterns are chosen for their strength of their willpower and the ability to overcome fear. There are 3,600 sectors in the known universe, with each having its own green lantern. However, sector 2814, where Earth resides, has several. Hal Jordan, Guy Gardner, John Stewart, Kyle Rayner, Jessica Cruz, and Simon Baz are all of the Green Lanterns of Earth, though some have been assigned off-world and others are considered Honor Guard. These members are only called in for major problems. Some of the most other well-known Green Lanterns are Kilowog, Chip, and Mogo. And I just want to let you know, Chip is a squirrel and Mogo is a planet. I mean, how cool is that? Next up, we have the Yellow Lanterns, the second core to appear. The Yellow Lanterns, or Sinestro Corps, were created by former Green Lantern Sinestro. He created his core to harness the power of fear with their Yellow Lanterns and fight against the Green Lanterns and the Guardians of the Universe. He believed that they were too soft and would not do what was necessary to maintain a form of peace. Sinestro is the most well-known member of the Yellow Lanterns, but his daughter has also been a member. Batman has even been shown to wear a Yellow Lantern ring for brief periods at times. The core calls Sinestro's homeworld of Kuward as their base of operations, and are represented by the physical manifestation of fear known as Parallax. The Red Lanterns are one of the coolest forms of lanterns. These people are the ones who are pissed off all the time. The Red Lanterns are powered by their rage. The angrier they grow, the more powerful and animalistic they become. Their rings function the same as the other cores, but they also have the ability to spit lava like blood from their mouths. Red Lanterns were created by Atrocitus, who was one of the only surviving members of his species after the Guardians and Manhunters destroyed Sector 666. His blinding rage created the Red Power Battery. Prominent members, especially during the Civil War of the Red Lanterns, included Atrocitus, Guy Gardner, Kara zor yes, Supergirl, Dexstar, the cat that everyone sees, and Bleeze, the cover girl who's got the bone wings. Next up is the Blue Lanterns. Powered by the emotion of hope, they've been created by Ganthet and Sate when they were exiled from the Guardians during the Sinestro Corps War. One of the first members of the Corps was Saint Brody Walker. It is said that the Blue Lanterns are powered by hope and become stronger when they're surrounded by Green Lanterns. Blue Lantern rings are also able to heal and regenerate lost tissue. The Blue Lanterns were instrumental in defeating the Black Lanterns during the Blackest Night event. The Orange Lanterns are probably the funniest versions of the Lanterns, and they are powered by the emotion of greed. The Orange Lanterns are based out of the planet of Okara, and only have one active member, Larfreeze. This is because Larfreeze's greed is so strong that he refuses to give up the other Orange Power Rings. However, this makes him powerful, and he's capable of creating an Orange Construct army from his greed. There have been other members, with Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, and Lex Luthor all having been given rings at one point or another. The Indigo Lanterns are allies to the Green Lantern Corps. The Indigo Tribe is powered by an emotional compassion and calls the world of Nock their homeworld. However, they are a tribe of wanderers and led by Indigo One. Jon Stewart, Ray Palmer, and Sinestro have all been bearers of the Indigo Power Rings. Their power rings work pretty much the same as the others, but the Indigo Tribe also has the ability to teleport themselves across the galaxy. They can heal people from great wounds as well, but this opens up the person to the pain that they have inflicted on others. 
Violet Lanterns are the Star Sapphire Core, which traces back to Star Sapphire, a villain that fought against Hal Jordan. However, the Core was founded on the planet of Zamoran and was powered by the emotion of love. Originally, the Zamorans would only have one champion, with the greatest being Carol Ferris. They eventually formed their own power battery and helped in the Blackest Night event. While the members of the Core are usually women, such as Wonder Woman, both Guy Gardner and Superman have wielded violet power rings. Black Lanterns were founded by Black Hand, a villain of the Green Lantern. He is eventually captured by the Guardians of the Universe, but it is revealed that he has a strange power. After he kills himself, it is the Guardian known as Scar who created the first Black Power Ring and resurrected Black Hand as the physical embodiment of death. Black Hand would then begin to move through the galaxy, with his goal being to put out the light of the emotional spectrum. During the Blackest Night event, many dead heroes of the past would rise as Black Lanterns, fighting against the heroes of Earth and the various Lantern Corps. Powered by death, the Black Lanterns are reanimated dead, their power rings sharing the same abilities as the others, but are attached to the bearers by their Black Tendrils. With each person the wearer kills, all power rings become more powerful. The Black Rings also allow their users a high level of healing, allowing them to survive any wound. The White Lanterns are bonded with the embodiment of life, the life entity. White Lanterns were created to fight against the Blackest Knight. Hal Jordan uses the White Lantern Ring to heal the heroes that have been affected by the Black Lanterns. After the defeat of the Black Lanterns, the White Lantern core is dissolved, all except for Dead Man. The White Lantern has godlike abilities. Sinestra uses it to defeat whole groups of Black Lanterns in a single blow, and Hal Jordan shows that it can resurrect the dead that were claimed by Black Hand. Eventually, Kyle Rayner would become the only White Lantern, and practically become Space Jesus as he creates his own planet and own life forms. The Ultraviolet Lanterns are the last official lantern to be created. The Ultraviolet Core was introduced during Scott Snyder's Justice League run. Powered by the invisible emotional spectrum, the Ultraviolet Core controls the unseen light. Jon Stewart was the first member of the Core, though it is revealed that the Ring Bearers do not control their powers as the other Lanterns do. Instead, they're controlled by Umbrex, the creator of the Ultraviolet Lanterns and bearer of the unseen light. Now, there are two other rings that have existed and don't seem to have any particular core or emotional spectrum link. First off is the Phantom Ring. A Phantom Ring is capable of channeling the entirety of the emotional spectrum. But unlike the other rings, where like Kyle trained his ring to become a White Lantern Ring, the Phantom Ring forces its user to go through all of the emotions at different times. They have no control over the power. The last ring that we don't seem to have very much information about right now, but has popped up, as far as I know, twice, is the Omega Ring. It doesn't appear to have any form of a core, but it does appear to have unlimited power. Kyle Rayner used this ring very briefly in the Omega Men run, when he seemingly lost his Green Lantern ring, and was kind of dealing with all of the crazy powers he had acquired as a White Lantern. But it was more recently used when Roy Harper came back from the dead as the wielder of the Black Ring, but that transformed into the Omega Ring. Then Darkseid used this Omega Ring to power up his new attempt to conquer the multiverse. We don't know that much about the Omega Ring, but I felt that this and the Phantom Ring were both worth mentioning in general. There's also one final ring that we literally know nothing about, the Gold Lanterns. Apparently in the Legion of Superheroes, in the far-flung future, we discover that the Elders of Oa created a gold ring at the end of time. So, go figure, another one. Probably just like a White Lantern ring, but they can control it. That's my guess. But either way, guys, this has been a rundown of all of the spectrums and the rings that exist in DC Comics as of September 2021. Knowing the way DC Comics works, I'll have to make a new video on this very soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed this recap and this ability to gain more knowledge of your favorite superheroes like Green Lanterns. Let us know in the comments down below other characters and concepts that you want us to explain better here on the channel. And don't forget to check back as very soon we'll be cutting into the Green Lantern saga, telling you where it began going into Blankest Night. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time right here at Comic Storian.